terms of the greatest danger that Great Britain ever came to war. But is, is it not the case, it's my impression, that in, during the days of the missile crisis, the Kennedy administration barely informed London what was going on. There, there was very little um, information, and certainly no advice was sought from the, from the government by Kennedy. Or is that wrong? No, I don't think any advice was sought, but remember that uh, we're talking about from Tuesday to, um, uh, uh, to a Monday. Uh, but none, nonetheless, even though I wouldn't dissent from your, uh, your, uh, your general uh, uh, conclusion, the decision-making process would, I think, have made that um, uh, uh, really um, uh, impossible. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, I mean, the, the intelligence that um, produced uh, that helped avert the crisis was British uh, and uh, uh, American intelligence. So there was a, a special relationship, but you're absolutely right that um, uh, the only people who were consulted um, at a policy making level, not at um, uh, a non policy making level, was, uh, <coughs> was, uh, was XCOM. Absolutely. No. But <coughs> let me just say one. one uh, uh, other thing. I mean, this is such intense period that people's minds have a very narrow focus. The, the Cuban Missile Crisis is the supreme example known to me of out of sight, out of mind. There were submarines off the United States as close to the United States as the Cuban Missile Bases, which could have launched. Um, uh, but because they were not visible, they were not uh, 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 controversial. I mean, this is an entirely new kind of crisis in, uh, in, in, in world history. And um, you know, how in the end we got out of it um, is not easy. But in the end, you know, the, there were a, number, a very small number of people who were able to make policy. And the main ones were Khrushchev, who backed down, and uh, Kennedy, who kept his, uh, who, who kept his name. And uh, that's not the whole of the, of the explanation, but one that's only got to imagine. And by the way, I used to um, uh, do a series for 13 years on Radio 4 called What If, and I did actually do one on the missile crisis. And, uh, uh, the, uh, the Russian, the American, and the uh, British experts were in rare agreement that is to say they prophesied the end of the world if the United States had not discovered ahead of time uh, that uh, the missile bases were. Uh, 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 were there. Um, so, you know, this is one of those crises, it seems to me, in which it could have gone either way. And in which um, it's so finely balanced that it's one of those rare occasions in which the personalities of the decision makers are absolutely crucial. And as I've said, um, I would rest my case on the difference between uh, Kennedy and his successor 13 months ago, and Khrushchev and any of the people who might have uh, succeeded Stalin uh, and were the friends of succeeded Stalin. I think we have time for one more question. Thank you.
children actually influence decision makers, which is not, of course, a child coming up to him or his office shop and saying, yeah, my class have been thinking about this and this is what we do. And just by their presence. Uh, everybody in the United States knew two things. Uh, one, that their own children, um, if they were of school age, had uh, been under the, you know, the duck and cover exercise. Secondly, if they were in the White House, that um, uh, one of the things which um, happened with uh, Caroline Kennedy, almost fine, and with her brother uh, and John, who was not yet uh, free of time to the missile crisis, is that they were high on the desk. There's been a charming photograph recently of Caroline uh, uh, Kennedy uh, going uh, along to the White House. And you see Obama looking under uh, the desk in the Oval Office to see if she's still there. Now, it makes this difference that um, when um, XCOM meets for, you know, uh, with this unprecedentedly scary news, who should be hiding under uh, the cabinet table? And Caroline Kennedy. And she comes up, and quite reasonably, unless you know, she's, she's lifted the bow <coughs> recently, we know from the, the papers which uh, are kept in the Kennedy Library in Boston. And she says three things. And uh, uh, Father, uh, John F. Kennedy, says three things. Then she skips out the room. And there's a certain amount of, uh, of laughter. But what you notice, or at least I notice, the Soviet Union's never wrote the same kind of way. But that um, people who were involved in decision making in the Cuban Missile Crisis, they were doing driven to work. And what do they see? They see children playing on the sidewalk. Well, there were always children playing on the sidewalk. But it didn't actually have a very much influence, except that this crisis is so grave that they actually ask themselves the question, you know, is something uh, that um, uh, we're going to do today going to make a difference to these children? So, you know, um, the, the study of documents cannot possibly uh, provide the answer to uh, that question. But the, the general evidence of uh, the fact that um, children suddenly appear from, uh, from underneath the table in the White House, uh, from underneath the, the Oval Office, are uh, visible on the, uh, on, uh, on the sidewalk. And also, that everybody in XCOM, if they have a child at school, while they're discussing what to do, the child is being taught to hide under the desk and adopt um, uh, the various position. Now, uh, to, to go back to my uh, initial point, you know, um, George Orwell could cope with this. Not a single British or American writer since has been able to cope with it. So, you know, he died much too early. And uh, the reason that um, uh, history of the Cuban Missile Crisis has not begun to cope with the human imagination that is required to come to terms with that period. You know, as with so much to do, um, with the Missile Crisis as a very personal explanation. Thank you very much indeed. That's all.